Uh, hi, I'm Tim McCabe. I'm curator of the insect collection here at the New York State Museum. Uh, and today I hope to show you what you have to do for your own uh, personal or private collection of whatever, uh, we'll call it an organic artifact you might have. In this case, it's an insect collection. And insects are prone to damage from other pests, which are also insects, like carpet beetles. To avoid this, we have modern cabinets with good tight-fitting drawers inside of tight-fitting cabinets. Here's an example of a, a drawer, really a box within a box. Each is a protective layer that keeps pests out of the collection. You should be doing something similar. You should have a tight-fitting box and put it in a cabinet with a tight-fitting door so that all light is blocked out. The reason for blocking out light isn't so much to inhibit pests as it is to prevent structural damage to your collection. An example of that here is a, a luna moth, which is a local native silk moth. Uh, it normally is a bright green like the lower specimen. The upper specimen here is pale, it's white. They're both 50 years old. The lower one has been kept in the dark for 50 years, and the green color is as fresh as, as if the specimen was collected today. The pale one was put on exhibit for about a month just under ordinary fluorescent lights like we have here, and it's turned white. In fact, if I took this green one and put it in the direct sunlight, in 10 minutes it would look like this white specimen. So the cabinet and the ceiling off not only keeps museum pests out, but it prevents structural damage from too much uh, UV radiation. Now, in this case, we have some examples that I've saved of carpet beetle damage to a collection. The most noteworthy thing that uh, I want to po point out is that by using a white bottom, I don't care if it's white paper, this happens to be on white pinning foam so that insect specimens can be uh, positioned properly. The white foam will show up the black frass of a carpet beetle very readily. So with just a casual visual inspection, you should be able to tell that you've got carpet beetle problems. But also that you can find the adult, which because it's a tight fitting drawer, the d adult will emerge inside this box and not be able to get out and you'll find dead adults. Uh, you'll find cast skins from each of the four molts that the beetle larvae make. And you'll see all the frass against the white. It'll look like powder, dark powder against your white background. That indicates that you have a carpet beetle problem. That gets us to the next step, which is what do you do about a carpet beetle problem? In this collection, uh, because it's a public space, we can't use toxic chemicals that kill uh, the dermestids outright. You won't want to be using toxic chemicals in your home or your private collection is stored either. So what's recommended by me here is to put down white under all your objects so that you can easily detect the damage. When you do detect the damage, then you've got several things you can do. Uh, first and foremost is to see if you can't find the specimens actually feeding on it and remove the specimens from, from your artifact. Uh, you can put the specimens in a freezer and leave them in the freezer for four or five days. That will kill some stages, but some stages will be resistant to freezing because these carpet beetles occur in nature out of doors and at a certain say, stage of their life cycle, they can go into diapause and survive the winter. So I've put living dermestid larvae in a, a deep freezer for minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit for three months, thawed them out, and they crawled off. So it isn't a guarantee, but it will knock some of them back because some of the life stages won't be at the critical point where they can go into a, a diapause. That's a first step after it comes out of the freezer, now you have to watch it. In other words, put it over again, a white background, and once a month for a couple months, 
check to make sure no powder, no frass in the beetles are occurring on the, on the white background. That's a good way to do it, sort of mechanical method, no insecticide involved. Probably a next step would be to put um, a very safe insect repellent in the box, like your cedar strips or even the, the mothballs, which are toxic but not, not very toxic. Um, they're pretty safe in a situation where you've got things double boxed to, to use mothballs that the, the mothballs and the cedar strips are just repellents. If you've already got your dermestids in the collection, in your artifacts, uh, they'll continue to reproduce and develop in there. It's just that it'll keep things out if, if it's clean to begin with, but it won't do anything to a living organism in the collection. The main thing is, of course, observation. If you once you find the damage, make sure that you're looking for frass to accumulate several times uh, before you put it away for storage again. I want to show one case of damage here to a collection that we got in the 1920s that wasn't protected against dermestids. And the dermestids managed to get into the collection and totally wreak havoc with the collection. You can see how all the beetles and other insects in this box were completely dismembered, even to the extent that the chitin, which is no nutritive value at all, is still completely devoured by the domestic larvae. Th thank you for watching. I hope this helps you with your personal collection. If you care for your specimens at all, you should consider a museum for the ultimate disposal. Uh, we're very grateful to get material as, uh, as uh, your expertise develops. It'll make the material even more valuable to collections and to mankind. Mm -hmm.